Hello, Mother. I'm so glad I found you in, Dolly. Jill, this is my mother. Your mother? Have I been here a month? <laughs> mother? <laughs> this is Mrs. Benson. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Benson? Are you living here, too? No, I live next door. I just stopped in to see if John... I need some help to bring up my blouse. So I see. And that <laughs> is your blouse. <laughs> there it is. You see, it's a, it took this long zipper in the back, and it is hard to do a little. Put your things on. Hey, Mom, what are you doing here? We had an agreement. I was in the neighborhood. No, you were at Sachs, which is on 50th Street and 5th Avenue. This is 11th Street, between 2nd and 3rd. Well, I bought you some new shirts, and I thought you might have them sooner if I brought them myself. I don't need any shirts, and you only brought them as an excuse to come down here. Hey, uh, would you mind? <laughs> This is what you left home for? This is it. <laughs> Not Buckingham Palace, is it? No, it's the Taj Mahal. And is this where you eat on the floor? <laughs> we were having a make-believe picnic. It's fun eating on the floor, Mother. You should try it sometime. And well, where did this furniture come from? Some of it came from the apartment, and others I got from the junk shop. Wait, don't tell me. Let me guess. There's a difference between floppy and dirty. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Has the store always been open? No, it's always been locked. I opened it this morning. And what on earth is that? <laughs> now what are you looking at? That's what I'd like to know. It's your bed. My bed. You actually sleep up there? <laughs> like a baby. Great. What happens if you fall out? Well, I go to the ladder and I climb back up. <laughs> Where are your clothes? There's a chest of drawer in the bathroom. Oh, and where is the bathroom? Under the bed? No. Behind the ladder. Of course it is. Hey. Were you ever right? About what? She never had syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Not about plumbing. <laughs> How did you know it was her whenever she came in? I mean, she didn't make a sound. No. What is that? <laughs> it's called numero dis. And she wears about half a bottle at a time. I always smell when she's around. <laughs> okay, now what is she doing? She's checking to make sure I have enough socks and underwear. She's a nut about socks and underwear. <laughs> what she's really doing is gathering up enough evidence to hit me with. I was so sure she'd walk in the door and say, I could absolutely cry. Oh, she's not finished yet. She'll say it. Well, if she was going to say it, she'd have said it by now. Uh, how much do you want to bet that she'll say it? How about dinner? If she doesn't say it, then I pay and we eat at my place. If she does say it, <coughs> Then you pay and we eat at your place. Okay, but you might as well start shopping. <laughs> well, that is some bathroom. No wonder you keep it hidden. Well, I thought you were going to say something else. Yes, well, I haven't finished. I haven't even started. Here you come. Well, go ahead and say it. Get it over with. Well, there's only one thing to say. Perhaps it's a blessing you can't see what you're living in. Ah, uh, I count that blessing every time I walk in the front door. Johnny, can I be honest? Can you? Here comes. I am shocked and appalled. <clears throat> I'm loose. Is 7.30 all right? Perfect. There's no bathtub in your bathroom. Because it's under the dining table. <laughs> 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 I win. You win. 
Okay. Hamburgers okay? Okay. But at least two each. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just talking about this rat hole, Donnie. I'm also talking about you. But you're too thin. You've lost weight. I haven't lost anything. I'm the right weight for my height. 6'1", in my age, 11. Mm -hmm. I'd like <laughs> to see what you're eating. Well, there's nothing in here but some lettuce. Oh, and an apple. Where? Fine. <laughs>
Well, I bet they have. You told me this morning you didn't even know Mr. Spencer's name. Well, I did. We hadn't met whenever we talked. Oh, well, you certainly made friends in a hurry, didn't you? She's a very friendly girl. <laughs> <laughs>
up some colorful language, haven't you? <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, I think you've learned quite enough, young man. I hardly recognize my own son. What are you doing? What I should have done long ago. I've taken you home. Well, forget it, Mother. There's no way. You cannot stay down here alone, Donnie. Well, I'm not alone. I'm a friend. Oh, don't think you're fooling me with all your parties. There are no parties. You have no friends. I do, too, have friends. I, I have Mrs. Vincent. You think that Oh, but they're not as much fun. Besides, I have something better. A seeing eye mother. That's right, and she's taking you home. Mrs. Vincent will just have to earn the dress herself. Put the suitcase away. You're coming home with me, Donnie. Give me the suitcase. Give me the suitcase. Where is it? Give me the suitcase, mother. Give it to me. Well, 
Aren't you going to deny that you said that? Well, how can I, dear? You obviously heard it. There are plenty of true things that you can put me down with. You don't have to put me down with lies. <laughs> you know what I like about you. Uh-huh. Nothing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like your honesty, your candor. You're a very worldly young woman, aren't you, Mrs. Benson? Well, I suppose I am. Why do you call me Mrs. Benson? Well, that's your name, isn't it, Mrs. Benson? Yeah, but you don't say it like you mean it. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. I tell you what, why don't I call you Jill? That's more friendly, and I'll try to say it as though I mean it. Now, um, Jill, you were telling me about your childhood. I was. It must have been interesting having so many fathers. Well, you know, actually it was... All of my mother's husbands were all different, so I learned all kinds of things about life, world religion. My first father was a Methodist. The second was a Christian scientist. The third was a Episcopalian, and the last one was Jewish. Mm -hmm. Did your mother like Catholic? Oh, yeah. She liked them very much, but Catholics don't allow to marry her for some reason. <laughs> I imagine she had an X rating from the church. Too bad. She's really very nice. I'm sure she is. So it's your childhood that's made you so worldly and understanding. Yeah. And being so worldly and understanding, I can tell you didn't invite me here to discuss my childhood or to tell me how pretty I am. I was just interested in finding out what you and Donnie might have in common. He likes you very much. I like him very much. He very well may be the most beautiful person I have ever met in my life. I mean, just imagine going through life not seeing a flower or a painting or even a Christmas card. I want to die. Don wants to live. I mean, really live. And he could even kid about it. <laughs> He's fantastic. Well, then, uh... You would want what's best for Donnie then, wouldn't you? Now we're getting to it, aren't we? Like, maybe I should tell him to move in with you, is that it? Donnie was happy at home until Linda Fletcher filled his head full of ideas of having a place of his own. Or maybe you just want to believe that he can only be happy with you. Well, there are none so blind as those who will not see. Look, I can quote Dylan Thomas and the little Donnie Dark. <laughs> You constantly astonish me. Well, we women of the world do that. Oh, how like Linda you are. And Donnie certainly is consistent with his girl. Why do you call him Johnny? Well, that's his name. <gasps> oh, don't I say it as though I mean it. He hates being called Johnny. Oh, well, he's never mentioned it. He's just gonna lick it. There are none so deaf as those who will not hear. You could make up a lot of those, couldn't you? There are none so lame as those who will not walk. There are none so thin as those who will not eat. Do you really think it's a good idea for Donnie to live down here alone? I think it's a good idea for Don to live wherever he wants to. And he's not alone. I'm here. Yes, but for how long? Do you have a lease on that apartment? No. So you could leave tomorrow if you felt like it. Yeah, that's right. You could sustain a marriage for more than six days, could you? And marriage doesn't concern you. Well, it obviously didn't concern you either. That's <laughs> true. Have you given any thought to what marriage to a blind boy might be like? Not even your mother has covered that territory. Hey, can we leave my mother out of this? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were so touchy about her. I'm not touchy about her. I just don't want to talk about her. All right. Let's talk about you. You've seen Donnie in this apartment that he's memorized, and memorized how many steps to the drugstore and the delicatessen. You take him out of this room. He panics. He's lost. Donnie needs someone who will stay with him for more than six days. You don't have to worry, Mrs. Baker. How big Jerry's will ever develop between Don and I am? I'm not built that way. But Donnie is built that way. Ladies, we're just having kids. Oh, kids? Well, that's how it started with Linda, just kick. But he fell in love with her and he'll fall in love with you too. Then what? I don't know. Then don't let it go that far. Stop now before you hurt him. What about you? I mean, aren't you hurting him? I can't hurt him. I can only irritate him. You can hurt him. The longer you stay, the more it will hurt him when you go. Let him come home with me and 
You won't have your kids with someone who won't feel them when you're born. You know, I'm not so sure that you can't hurt him. Maybe more so than anybody else. Look, I think that you deserve a lot of credit for raising a pretty marvelous guy. But raising a child, even a blind one, isn't a lifetime occupation. Now the more you help him, the more you hurt him. It was Linda Fletcher, not you, who gave him what he needed most. Confidence in himself. You're always dwelling on the negative. Always what he needs, never what he wants. Always what he can't do, never what he can. <coughs> what about his music? Have you heard the songs that he wrote? I bet you didn't even know that he could write songs. You're probably dead right about me. I'm not the girl for Dawn. But I do know one thing. Neither are you. And if I'm going to tell anybody to go home, Mrs. Baker, it'll be you. You go home.